So one thing you may hear an awful, awful lot is that you can't have God and science. That you have to choose between one or the other, right? And that if you're a professing Christian or a believer in Christ, that you have to leave science at the door. Um, and that if you're a pr professing Christian, you're anti-science, and you'll just say, well, I don't know, I'll just say God did it. So people think that we believe in a God of the gaps. But I'm not a God of, I don't believe in God of the gaps. I believe, of, I believe in the God of the whole show, the one who did everything, and I believe in the parts that I don't know. Um, which is much different than believing in God of the gaps. I'd also like to say that um, right, from, right in the very beginning of the first book of the Bible in Genesis, one of the very first things that God instructs Adam to do is to name all of the animals, which is actually a form of science, taxono taxonomy. Um, it's, a, it's a naming classification system. So instead of this idea that if you believe in God that it takes away from science, like some people promote, such as Bai Nye, the science guy, God is actually telling us to do science. Clearly, God could have been like, I'll name all of the animals. Okay, Adam, you just sit back and relax, and you don't, do, you don't have to do anything, because I've taken care of everything. I've named all of the animals for you. You don't have to figure out anything. You don't have to discover anything new. Of course not. When God created us in his image, we were also created with many of the same attributes or the nature of God, which means that we ourselves could be said as, you know, where we have this morality in us that's built in us. We have this rational, you know, logical mind within us. We can reason. We can understand things. Um, we like to discover things. We like to create things. So we have a lot of these things that were built or designed into us and God's actually telling us to go out and to do science. Yet, in the mainstream today, you have people telling you, no, if you're a Christian, science can't um, progress forward. It, we can't develop new scientific discoveries. We can't create new technologies because Christianity blocks all of that. And that's the farthest thing from the truth just as the example that I've given you. God instructs us and even tells us to go out into the world, to name things, to do things. We aren't just to sit in a chair and think to ourselves, well, God did it, therefore I don't have to do anything. No. God gave us responsibilities. And, you know, we have dominion over this earth. We are to care for things. We are to care for the animals. We are to care for the earth. We are to be good stewards of those things which God has given us. So we have many responsibilities. And many of the great scientists that have ever lived were believers in God. And a lot of them at that were Christians. Galileo, Kepler, Newton, Copernicus. Um, so, you know, when thinking about that, many of these scientists understood this idea, which is a quote from C.S. Lewis, in that men became scientists because they expected law in nature, and they expected law in nature because they believed in a law giver, or God. And, you know, when these scientists discovered things out in nature, they weren't like, oh, I've discovered it now, I don't need God. No, it compelled them to, to, further in, to further investigate, to do more science. And instead of, you know, saying that, you know, God didn't exist or that I don't need God anymore, it, had, it gave them a greater understanding of God and it drew them closer, more or less, to God. Because, see, science, if God really does exist, Science should point towards God, not away from God. Because science can only make sense in this rational, logical mind of ours. If we're just a product of random mutation and all that, we have no good reason to even trust our own brains. 
Um, so, with that in mind, it's very easy then to understand that um, as being a professing Christian, one can be very scientific and one can absolutely develop new technologies because most of the technologies and the science that we have was actually given to us by Christianity in the 15th and 16th centuries by scientists such as Newton, Galileo, Copernicus, and Kepler. Um, even the man that developed the scientific method was a believer in God. The idea, you know, that science is really something that's observable, testable, and repeatable. Whereas that's observable science, and then we have historical science. Things that we believe happened in the past, but we weren't there, so we assume. And you could say that as professing Christians, we have the Bible as our historical book, right? that tells us what happened in the past and that is basically our foundation that's our historical reference point if you will whereas the non-believer that doesn't use the Bible as a historical reference point has many of these assumptions or theories of what they think happened in the past but they don't know and so they too are relying on faith it's important to understand that we believe in things that we don't know there's a difference between knowing and believing. If you know something, you wouldn't say you believe something. And knowledge is different than belief. And the reason we call ourselves believers in Christ is because we don't know. That is why there is faith. I wasn't there when Jesus was alive. I wasn't there in the beginning on day one when God created the heavens and the earth. And so I call myself a believer because I don't know. You believe in something when you don't know something for sure. For example, I wouldn't say I believe in my brother when I know my brother. Right? Nobody would say, oh, I believe in my dad when you know your dad. So, it's very important to 